Hey everyone, this lesson is on the notch signaling pathway. So to begin, the notch signaling pathway is a highly conserved pathway. And it is highly conserved because it is important in the development and homeostasis of organisms. Now more specifically, the notch signaling pathway has roles in cellular proliferation, differentiation, and apoptosis. Now the notch signaling pathway is critically involved in the development of sensory hair cells and branched arterial networks. Now because the notch signaling pathway has roles in cellular proliferation, differentiation, and apoptosis, it has dual functions and seemingly apparent um, paradoxical functions. So in some circumstances, the notch signaling pathway is associated with tissue growth and cancer, while in other circumstances, the pathway is involved in cell death and tumor suppression. Now, the name of the pathway, notch signaling pathway, comes from the notch receptors. And there are actually four notch receptors in mammals. Notch 1, notch 2, notch 3, and notch 4. Now the ligands of the notch receptors are categorized into two families. One of the families is known as the jagged protein family, which includes JAG1 and JAG2. The other family of ligands includes the delta-like protein family, which includes delta-like ligand 1, delta-like ligand 3, and delta-like ligand 4. Now the notch signaling pathway involves intercellular signaling interactions. So because this pathway involves intercellular signaling interactions, it requires two cells, one a sending cell and the other a receiving cell. So what determines a sending cell and what determines a receiving cell? Well, the sending cell has more ligand than it does notch receptor. So the sending cell has more delta-like ligand or jagged protein than it does notch receptors. And vice versa for the receiving cell. The receiving cell has more notch receptor than it does ligand. Now the notch receptor has three components. One of them is an extracellular component, which is the notch extracellular domain. And that, that portion of the receptor is what binds to the ligand. It's what binds to the delta-like ligand or the jagged protein. Now there's also a notch intracellular domain, the NICD. And the third component is the transmembrane component, which actually attaches the extracellular and intracellular domains together. So in order for the notch signaling pathway to become activated, the delta-like ligand, or DLL, has to bind to the extracellular domain of the notch receptor. Now the first thing that has to happen, though, is that the DLL has to become activated. And it's activated by a protein within the sending cell known as mind bomb. And mind bomb actually ubiquinates the delta-like ligand in order for it to become activated. Once the delta-like ligand has become ubiquinated, it becomes activated and can then bind to the extracellular domain of the notch receptor. Once DLL of the sending cell binds to the notch receptor of the receiving cell, there's a protease known as ADAM, which actually cleaves the extracellular domain of the notch receptor effectively dislodging that component of the notch receptor off of the receiving cell. This is known as S2 cleavage. Once this happens, there's another protease known as secretase gamma, which then cleaves the notch intracellular domain, or NICD, off of the transmembrane portion of the notch receptor. This cleavage process is known as S3 cleavage. Now once the NICD has been cleaved off of the transmembrane portion of the notch receptor, it is free within the cytosol. Once NICD is free within the cytosol, it is able to bind to a complex of proteins including CSL and Mastermind, or MAM, and this complex will then further bind to P300. Now this entire complex of proteins involving CSL, Mastermind, NICD, and P300 all translocate into the nucleus where P300 acts as a histone acetylase. And this whole complex can lead to the transcription of notch target genes. Some of these genes include MYC, P21, and cyclin D3. Once the notch target genes have been expressed, NICD can be downregulated via an E3 ubiquitin ligase, FBW7, or FBOX, and WD repeat domain containing 7. 
Now, this E3 ubiquitin ligase effectively ubiquitinates the NICD, which can lead to the proteasomal degradation of NICD and effectively shutting this pathway down once the notch target genes have been expressed. Anyways, guys, that was a lesson on the notch signaling pathway. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.